Let's talk about why you need to be highly aware when you're photographing wildlife. Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. Recently on this channel, I've been talking about camera technique and camera settings. And the last video was about the emotional side of wildlife photography. And these are all really important topics. But the thing I'm going to talk about in this video trumps all of them. It's something that I think is so important. And it's not just important in photography. I think it's important in so many other things that we do. And I've tried to make it something that I have really tried to get better at uh, as much as I, I can. And I, I feel that has really helped me in so many areas of my life and, and my, my work. I have mentioned it briefly, I think, in some of the other videos uh, that I've made, but uh, I want to go into a little bit more depth uh, in, in this video. Before I get to that, I want to quickly mention something that I did mention at the end of the last video, but you may have missed it, and that is that in July and August, I'm running a five-week online wildlife photography workshop. And this is going to be a very immersive way to learn more about wildlife photography and to take your wildlife photography to the next level. It will be as immersive as you want it to be. There will be five uh, classes where I will teach live in this kind of a format. Uh, and then between the classes, we will have a forum, a place where we will go and engage uh, and continue discussions between the classes and where you can submit images and get feedback and uh, we already have a very diverse group of photographers registered from uh, Canada and the US and England and Germany and uh, Indonesia and I, I'm really looking forward to, to working with everyone. I will be closing registration soon, uh, just later, later this week and uh, I'm really looking forward to, to uh, working with anyone who, who registers for this workshop. If you're interested in finding out uh, more check out the link in the description of this video and perhaps uh, we'll see you there. All right, let's start by talking about a guy who you may not have heard of. His name was Colonel John Boyd and you can find out a lot more about him just by uh, doing a bit of a web search. Uh, there have been some very good books written about him. He was a fighter pilot, a military strategist. His theories have been applied far and wide, uh, initially in military circles, but they've been applied in business and in sports and many other fields. And I've really, I've applied his, his theories in, in so many areas of my life and, and work. He, amongst the many things that he did, uh, he taught aerial combat at the US Air Force Fighter Weapons School, which was the inspiration for the US Navy's Top Gun School. And his theories helped influence the design of aircraft such as the F-15 Eagle and the F-16 Falcon and the F-18 Hornet. He had many nicknames. One of his nicknames was 40 Second Boyd, as in 40 seconds, the amount of time. And they called him that because he had this standing bet where he bet that in a situation of aerial combat, if he was in front of an aircraft, that within 40 seconds he could maneuver and get behind that aircraft and deliver a kill shot and what he was teaching uh, when he was teaching aerial combat was not only how to survive up there in the sky but also how to to kill your opponent uh, which was a necessary thing thing to do one of the things that he came up with that he's probably best known for is something called the OODA loop O-O-D-A observe orient decide and act and this is a a theory of execution. It's something that, that Boyd imagined that we all do uh, in pretty much everything. And, and, I, and I believe that's, that's really true. Even as I'm making this video right now, I am observing what is going on in my, uh, in my sphere of awareness here. And then I'm orienting myself to what's happening. And then I'm making decisions. And then I'm acting on those decisions. And by the way, when we talk about observing, it doesn't just mean looking with our eyes, it also means listening. Uh, many of you know I'm a jazz musician and the OODA loop applies 
uh, so much in, in jazz because we are always listening and we're always looking and trying to take in what's happening and then orienting ourselves to that and making decisions all the time and acting on those decisions. So the OODA loop is something that is really, really powerful. And if we bring this back to photography, when we are out there in the field, great images come from great opportunities. And your ability to identify opportunities and identify the best opportunities depends very much on your situational awareness. That is your ability to be observing a situation and orienting yourself to what you see or hear or otherwise acquire. How can you get better? How can you improve your situational awareness? And by the way, the reason why I'm talking about situational awareness, this is a very specific thing around situations, around situations that, that may be changing. There are other concepts of awareness like self-awareness and group awareness if you're in a group of people or a team awareness. And these are all very important too, but to be discussed at another time. So let's talk about situational awareness. How can you get better at it? In wildlife photography, <clears throat> there are many things, but here's a few things for you. One is that it can be really helpful to extend the range of your awareness. So what I'm talking about is not just being aware of what is going on in your immediate vicinity, but also being trying to extend that range of being aware of what's happening further away. If we use an, an analogy such as, uh, say, driving, when you're driving a car, where do you look? Well, you don't just look out through the front, through the windscreen. You look out through the windows on the side. If I was going to turn left, I would definitely look out through the window on my left to see where I'm going to go before I go there. I have a mirror that allows me to look in the back. So you look everywhere. And when you're looking out through the front, through the windscreen, you don't just look down immediately at, say, the car in front of you. You try to look further ahead. And especially if you're driving at, at, at high speed, you really want to be looking further ahead. When you're out there photographing wildlife, one of the things that you can do is that you can use your telephoto lens to look around and try to, to scan around. And I see a lot of people doing that, and that's great. One thing that I can highly recommend if you don't already have one is to get a binocular or a set of binoculars or a spotting scope. A lot of people are familiar with binoculars. Not so many people seem to be familiar with monoculars. A monocular is something like this. It is basically half of a set of binoculars and therefore is, is half the size and half the weight. And so I use one because it's highly portable. I can carry it in my jacket. Uh, and even if I'm not wearing a jacket, I'll just have it slung over my shoulder on a strap uh, or I'll have it in my, my backpack. And it allows me to scan around. And although I could do that with my telephoto lens, I can see a lot further with this. It, uh, I have a lot greater clarity. I can see much more clearly through this than I can through my, through my, my viewfinder and, and my lens. Uh, and I'm not draining the battery in my camera. And it's highly portable. And there are times when I'll go out and I'll spend most of the day looking through this because perhaps I, I, I don't see anything all day or I don't see anything that I can photograph. And so even though a monocular is not as comfortable as a set of binoculars, uh, I've spent a lot of time looking through my monocular and I, it's fine for me. Uh, the other thing is that a set of binoculars does have a wider field of view and the monocular will require you to scan it around a bit more. But honestly, I, f I find it works uh, fairly well. And they're not very expensive. This one is a Bushnell. I think it's a 10 by 42. I'll put a link to it in the description below. But if you don't have something like this, I can highly recommend uh, getting that. I really, really uh, feel that it can it can just help so much. Now, by the way, this is not what you uh, what is often referred to as a spotting scope. There are spotting scopes that are uh, have even greater range and magnification than than something like this. But they require uh, they they need to be used on a tripod uh, for stability, and that's not the case with this. You can just handhold this. Another thing that I think can be very effective is to get better at being able to assess what is going on even while you're engaged in photographing a subject. Now, this is a tricky thing. 
when we are photographing a subject, we are very focused at what is happening through the viewfinder. And often when we, are, when we have this eye up to the viewfinder, we have this eye shut. So we can't see what else is happening around here. Something that, that can really help you to increase your awareness is to practice opening this eye and looking around even while you're photographing through the viewfinder. And to also be able to do it with the other eye. So in other words, being able to do this and being able to do this, right? Because you don't know what might be happening. Uh, and, and especially if you're photographing multiple subjects, this is really important because you may be photographing one subject and meanwhile there could be an amazing opportunity with another subject. Even if you're not photographing multiple subjects, just being open to the possibilities of uh, what might what might be available outside of the frame, uh, which might also require you, especially if you're shooting with prime lenses, to move to a different camera, uh, it, it, it can really help you with with your with your composition, uh, rather than just getting overly focused on on that subject and exactly where that subject is. And now, of course, you know even when you've got a subject within the frame, yes, you can move around and reposition where the subject is in the frame but uh, if you see some if you if you can be aware of what's happening outside of the frame you may see the possibility for something else especially if you see the possibility that the animal might go there or that something else might be happening that might make for an interesting scene the third thing I want to tell you about is the idea of getting really good at predicting a situation, especially, especially a situation that is changing. And that is often the case when we are out there photographing wildlife. The light is changing. The behavior of the animals is changing all the time. The, if the animal is moving around, the scene is going to change um, depending on, on where they, they might be. So all of these photos that I'm showing you right now, I got all of these photos because even though there were things that were changing all the time, I tried to remain highly aware of what was happening and I tried to predict what was going to happen. And especially if you need to do things like change your exposure or move to a different focal length, move to a different camera, you want to try to get ahead of the game as much as possible. Now this <laughs> story about this raccoon, I have to tell you this, this was quite interesting. interesting. This guy walked past and was on all fours and so there was no real shot there and after it passed I did go over just to take a brief look to see if I could see where it had gone and I didn't see it and I didn't look very hard I didn't want to bother it uh, so I came back to where I was and I was actually there chatting with someone else and then I saw it coming back and as soon as I saw it coming back I grabbed my camera altered the exposure and it only stood up for one second one second and I, I, I took the shot and I was very lucky that it, that it looked uh, towards me. Now most of these shots are capturing specific behavior but it could be anything in a situation that is changing and it doesn't even have to be a single subject like a lot of these uh, photos are focused on a single subject. This is a, an example where there were multiple subjects and I remember when I took this shot uh, I was in a vehicle and 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 we were driving and and I saw these elephants from, from quite far away and as we were driving towards them I was trying to assess what might happen and where might be the appropriate time time and place to stop uh, and uh, I wish I'd actually had a wider focal length and I wish I could have taken a wider shot than this so Awareness, I think, is just such an important thing. Honestly, I, I see people out in the field who are not making the most of their time in the field. They miss opportunities because they're not aware of what is happening, um, especially when a subject arrives and they get photographing that subject. They often get overly focused on taking the same kind of shot all the time and they don't vary their shots, uh, so they're not considering the other possibilities even with that subject and then of course there's the possibility of other subjects as well 
and all of the other things that, that may change in, in any situation. So I hope you guys found this helpful and I hope that you can take some of the things that I mentioned in this video and also look for other ways that you can become more aware when you're in the field and using your cameras. And one of the reasons that we want to get so practiced with our technique, with our camera technique, is so that we can have all that stuff on, all, on autopilot and increase our awareness so that we can, we can be more attuned to what is happening uh, around us. And this is important not just for getting great uh, photo opportunities, but also especially if you're out there and you're photographing dangerous animals, you, you really want to be as aware as you can be uh, for your own safety as well as the safety of other people, people if you're with other people, and for the safety of the animals as well. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to either comment below or if you want to have an extended discussion, hop on over to the Discord server. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.